Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, it's been two weeks and I have not been sitting still. I have been purchasing some new equipment to uh, further the research into the near infrared uh, questions here. Um, I've bought a EEG machine, as you can see over here. Um, unfortunately, the headset is not great, so I am still waiting for a new headset to arrive. So we can do some research on the influence of near infrared light on your brain. I've seen some interesting uh, videos on YouTube. One, is, one of them is from Dr. Lin. You can try and search for that if you want. He has um, been stimulating the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease with near infrared and had some interesting findings. There's also been a MIT study into this where they use 40 hertz on uh, a light source, an LED light source, and that also seems to have a good effect. So I'm going to see if I can combine those two things and use a 40 hertz near infrared light and check out what does it do. Does it have any effects? Can I measure it? Is the claim that our brain frequency can be elevated by this light? Is that a correct claim or not? I don't know yet, but I'll soon find out. Meanwhile, here I have a report. And this is a report from Russia. Thankfully, it is in English. Um, and I find this very interesting. This is the active spectra of near-infrared light in our tissue. Um, essentially what this looks at is what happens if we shine near-infrared light, or actually this is quite a wide spectrum, it's from 300 nanometers all the way down to 900 nanometers. What happens, what light is being absorbed, what light is not being absorbed, and by that, you can see, you can basically assume if that light is being absorbed, something happens with that energy. That energy needs to go somewhere. It doesn't just get lost. Now, we know we're looking at near infrared, and I know that most people think infrared, oh, you can feel that, that is heat. Uh, it doesn't count for near infrared. Near infrared is light, it's not heat. And if you put a lamp on, you can feel a, a tiny amount of. Of, of energy coming off of it, but it certainly isn't the same as a normal infrared sauna, like an incandescent lamp. They emit pretty much from 1500 nanometers all the way down to 4000 nanometers. That's, that's really the, the, the area of the spectrum where you can feel heat. What we do is something else. This is light. Now the interesting part of this research is it kind of tells us what kind of LED uh, what kind of light spectrum would be ideal? And I use this information to order the LEDs that I have. So uh, I have an LED with combined these four wavelengths, 620, 680, 760, and 820 nanometers in, in, in one package. And um, I can control that with electronics. I can basically choose which uh, wavelength I want to have. And that way I can, I can treat different things because um, 600 to 700 nanometers behaves differently from 700 to 900 nanometers. Um, the 760 and 820 nanometers will penetrate much deeper into the body as compared to the 620 and 8, 680. And the 620 and 680, it's just visible red light. I mean, you know, I think you, you understand um, that the, the visible light spectrum is, is very difficult to penetrate through. You know, you can shine a bright torch on your hand and, and you can see some of that light shining through and you probably have noticed that if you do that, if you do shine a torch on your hand, you will see a reddish kind of glow through your hand. But the funny thing here is that our body is actually opaque in this near infrared frequency. Light can penetrate and it can penetrate quite deep. As you can see, they're all connected to two main tabs. Uh, this has been a very, very small batch of only 10 LEDs that I got made, so I have to cut them loose so that I can connect them up and, and show you guys what's what. First though, I want to check plus and minus because I only need to cut one side and normally I cut the minus side. So let's give her some juice. I got a power supply up here and I'm going to tune that guy to about 15 volts or so at a maximum current of about 100 milliamps, because I don't want to blind myself with this. There we go. Yeah, now you can see 
at least I can see. Let's see if you can see that. Ta -ta. There's light coming off of it. They're not all lit equally because they have a different forward voltage. So I'm going to need a separate power supply per strip. But that's not a problem. I can get that done. So here we go. This is plus. I'm going to cut up the minus and then I can show you how bright these guys get. I know that this is going to be a little bit out of focus, so bear with me, please, as I go ahead and cut it. There we go. The close focus of this camera is not great. And I can switch it back on. Okay. So, 820 nanos. You can see a little bit of visual red light but the spike of it is in the uh, 820 nanometer area. You always get some artifacts, you could say. I can pump this up a little bit and give it about 500 milliamps. You can run it up to 600 milliamps, especially if you had good cooling. There we go. And now it's running at 500 milliamps. Now, you can, you can clearly see this camera has a great infrared filter. I would have expected this to overexpose, but it does not. So it has a very good infrared filter. There we go. Now, I can do the same thing over here. And already see that I was mistaken. 760 is more visible than 820. Basically, the higher the number gets, the less you'll see. So this is 820, that was 760. And in the middle, we have a red. And it'll be super bright. Wow, there you go. Now you might think, why is the middle one that bright? Actually, they're all equally bright. The difference is that this light frequency we can clearly see with our eyes. Our eyes are sensitive to it. This light frequency we cannot see with our eyes. It's beyond the spectrum. So it's just as bright as this, but we simply cannot see it. You see a similar effect with uh, UV lights that you can basically look into a UV LED while it's on if it's 50 watts, which is extremely harmful. Never try to do that. It will really damage your retina. It has a lot of power. So this is the LED. Um, now I'm going to show you the lamp that I built. So here we go. Basically, this is a, a track light. I removed the track part of it. It's got a nice beefy heat sink on it, which is why I like it. I put a fan on the inside to cool it down. There are switch mode power supplies in there to feed the LEDs. And there's a nice lens assembly here. So it can be quite bright and you can focus the light if you want to. If you want to basically penetrate relatively deep, do something like bone healing, then you know you need a good lens. You need to get that light focused. Um, I hooked it up to my Variax. I'm going to switch that thing on. And voila presto, here is the light. Doesn't look bright, but trust me, this is 20 watts, actually 23.7 watts it's uh, consuming right now of uh, near infrared. And I got a switch over here to switch the red light on if you need to you know, do any kind of treatment for uh, anything that is relatively topical that's uh, on the skin or maybe slightly just below the skin. And you can switch the red light on and voila presto. There you go. So this is just a test for myself. Uh, I, I built a couple of these things. I gave them to a couple of friends to check them out and see if they thought it would be useful or not. I, I've got quite a lot of positive feedback from it. People seem to really enjoy using these things and it, uh, it seems to help them with uh, bone fractures and stuff like that. I have some people that have had uh, broken wrists, actually three of them, <laughs> they've all used it. All of them, when going back to the hospital, uh, basically met a surprise physician that said, wow, it healed really fast. Your, your stitches are overgrown, uh, doing great with that. So it seems to be effective. Basically, it's also why I made them. I need to test it. I need to test to see if it works or not. But this light is very simple. There's no pulsating function inside. There's no generator. I want to do that. That the next step will be to make uh, a lamp that I can pulse the light with. And I can also adjust the uh, combination accurately. This is just an on and off switch. It's not very accurate. Uh, so that's the next step that I'm going to do. And then we're going to hook people up to the EEG and you know myself as well. I'm going to go in and, and hook myself up to the EEG to see does it affect my brain or not? And if, if so, can I measure it? How significant is it? Can I change my uh, 
my, my brain frequency or not. Uh, all questions that I have that I have no answer for yet. But I'm looking into it. I'm trying to get the answers. And uh, if I do, I'll share it with you. Talking about sharing. Um, if you're interested in this subject, do yourself a favor and go to PubMed. And PubMed is the American government. Uh, it's basically the place where they dump all the research files. All the researchers that are done are you know, listed in PubMed so that the doctors and, and researchers can easily have access to these files. However, you can only read the abstract. And that really troubles me because most of the research on PubMed is publicly funded. It's funded with tax dollars. And tax dollars come from us. Then why do we not have access? Well, they claim you have access, but you gotta pay again. Uh, and that can be quite hefty, you know? You pay at least at least $30 and mostly about between $50 and $150 just to get that file, just to get that research. Which basically means that us guys that are tinkering away in our little office with our equipment, we have no access to that stuff. And I think that's ridiculous. Why not let everyone that is willing and capable to contribute to making this world a better place, why not let them ac have access? And, and, and why not use that available brain power to solve problems that are real problems? I don't understand why, why, why this is uh, not allowed. And yeah, I think it's ridiculous and I think it should change. And if we want that to change, I don't think we should rely on government because, well, I don't think it works. There's too many forces at play here. There's too many, too many companies and people with too many interests. I think it's a better idea for us to do what I'm doing here, is to just go for it, try and figure something out, and spend a few dollars on it, and share that information with others. And hopefully, I mean, if you're sitting out there and you're watching me do this and you have any questions, if you would like to partake in any kind of studies, if you uh, have any information to share with me, please do. Let's bypass it. Let's do it ourselves. So this is the message for today. Um, this is where I am right now. I hope I can get my headset in soon and do some EEG stuff and I'll share that. I'll film it and share it and uh, I hope you enjoy it. See you soon.